Breaking down Arizona Wildcats football. The Wildcats fall in the home opener 38 to 14 to San Diego State. I'm David Kelly, joined as always by Glenn Howe. You have a football class of 1985, and Glenn, this did not go as I don't think anybody planned. I think most people, most of us pundits, picked Arizona to win this game. I think most people had the under in this game, which was 48, and, and none of that happened. This was just a, as worst case a scenario on the field and off the field as you could have for a home opener. The team did not look good. There were issues with the new metal detectors and people getting into the game in a quick fashion. And then they've gone to a new uh, a moneyless type of system for paying for concessions. And that also did not go smoothly. And again, you got to understand that those things are going to take time. It was the first time for all of that, the metal detectors and, and, and the cashless system of paying. But when you've got a product that on, that's on the field that is developing and that is not performing at a high level, you can't suffer in these other areas because you are going to turn your fan base off and people are not going to come back to the stadium. Well, Dave, you know, I was excited about what I saw when I first got into the to the stadium. We had the zone of zoo was filling up. The crowd, the crowd was good. Everybody was the energy was going and then the game started. Uh, things were not didn't go very well. Um, I think that, you know, people are going to understand that this is this is a growing process. This process is going to take a little time. They're getting their guys, and we're going to turn this. I think we're going to turn this around. We just got to give them a shot. And fans, hang in there, and we got to show up for that NAU game. All right, let's talk about the quarterback situation, Glenn. I think you're at a point now after two games where you had a good performance by Gunnar Cruz and a not-so-good performance by Gunnar Cruz. I think Jed Fish has to open this up to an actual evaluation over the next two games. This next game against NAU, you're playing an FCS team. To me, it's almost, I've always categorized it as an exhibition game. I think you go into next Saturday and you give each of these guys a half, but you start Will Plummer first and second quarter, you bring Gunner in third and fourth quarter, and then I think you start Will Plummer against UCLA and give him his opportunity in a game that matters. Gunner Cruz now has had two opportunities in games that matter. I think Will Plummer in this evaluation process now deserves to have his shot to be the first guy out of the box, and that should be against UCLA uh, in two weeks. Well, Dave, I agree with everything until your last part, okay? I think they should both have both have a half, and then whoever wins the, that, that best performance gets UCLA. That's what I believe to do. And then that, that's going to be our starter from here on out. Then we go there until someone gets hurt. Unfortunately, hopefully not, nobody gets hurt. And, you know, uh, Gunner is just going to have to get better. I think let's put some pressure on the both of them and let's see who's going to win this battle. You know, on the defensive side, I think that we need to really work on tackling. Tackling was not very good on Saturday night. We need to be able to tackle guys, and that's important. And uh, understanding uh, the, the, the fundamentals of tackling. Indeed, there were too many missed tackles defensively, and we had not seen that in the game against BYU. I think you look at the first touchdown, uh, both Treshawn Hayward and Gunnar Maldonado had a chance at that one. And then late on a later touchdown, uh, Jaden Young had a chance to make it a minimal game and he missed the tackle. So again, when, you, when you're a struggling defense, you can't miss opportunities like that. I want to stay though with the offense and talk a little bit about Gunnar Cruz. There were some things that I did see that I liked from him. Uh, I thought that he's, he's, he's making some jumps in certain areas. I don't think they gave one of the things I didn't like is I didn't think Jed Fish gave him a lot of opportunity in, in, in the way that he called the first half of that ball game. In particular, there was a third and three play here early where they tried the screen pass to, to Michael Wiley, and there just weren't enough blockers out there to make that a successful play. I thought, though, where, what I, where I saw some improvement later in the game was a, a swing pass out on the edge to Stanley Berryhill where he got rid of the ball a little bit quicker. He got it to Stanley. Stanley quicker and he allowed Stanley an opportunity to make a play on his own so I thought that was a step forward and I also thought I mentioned last week I thought there was a third down play where he held the ball too long he had Woma open in the middle but it was it was in front of the chains and he didn't want to throw it because he knew it wasn't going to be a first down he made a similar play like that later in the ball game I believe it was to Tavian Cunningham where he hey he took the six yard it was third and like eight or ten he took the six yards they punted the ball
ball away, but he didn't take the snap, and to me, that was progress. Well, well, what I think is that if you got to the middle of the field, which we're not known for hitting in the middle of the field, just make that defense aware that we will hit the middle of the field. So if you got that six yard, and even though you don't know if he's going to break that and get that 10 yards and get that first down, but I think that we should have hit a little bit more to the middle of the field, get some routes in there with the tight end and also with the slot receivers and really concentrate so we can give that defense a little bit of an understanding. Hey, your, your middle of your field is going to be open for us and we're going to hit it. So I don't think we did that enough. And then I, I think on the run, some of the run plays, I think, you know, we just got to hit the holes. We got to hit the holes when you see the daylight, get to the daylight and, and uh, get north and south. Well, I thought they ran the ball a couple of times. I thought overall in the first half, they ran the ball with some efficiency. The second half, it broke down with the offensive line play, which I thought got worse as the game went along. And then there was one play in the third, and I think late in the third quarter, where they actually pulled the left guard and the left tackle to the right, and then they ran the ball to the left. So I'm not sure what happened on that play. But And then there were way too many penalties from the offensive line in this game. You cannot cripple this offense. And I thought the offensive line with the false starts uh, in this ball game, I thought there were maybe three or four in the game, crippled this offense. And, and Glenn, that just simply cannot happen. That, that, I mean, the, the penalties is what really was disturbing for me is that we, we, we can't afford our, our team and our offense cannot afford that because it just, it just, it doesn't help us at all uh, on anything, anything that we're trying to do because the penalties are, are just, we, we weren't moving the ball very well and we get penalties that just doubles on top of what we're not doing right. And then also, what I was very disturbed about is that third down efficiency was just one for 14. That, that I mean, that just doesn't give doesn't give our defense a chance. It doesn't give our defense a chance. They're out there all the time. And, uh, and we, we've got to be able to get better on that. Well, one of the guys I want to point out who is, who's played well in, in both of these ball games is Stanley Berryhill. And I, I want to show this play here in the fourth quarter when he gets this pass here on the edge. And, and I mean the stutter step here and runs right by the defender, Glenn. His run after catch so far this season is the best thing about this team. Yeah, and, and I, I'm going to tell you, if, if we – don't go to Stan more, okay? I think we 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 yes must must call our our offensive coordinators. It's Stevie Wonder, man, because he's not seeing anything <laughs> of what's going on. Because he needs to understand. Or I think we need to understand is that we need to get that guy the ball as much as they, even if the other team knows it. We need to create opportunities for him to touch the ball. Well, he had 12 touch. Well, let's see. He had he had seven touches in the ball game. They targeted him 10 times. He had five catches and two runs. Yeah, but yeah, I, I, you're absolutely right. Digits. Yeah, it has to be double digits, correct? Yes, he needs double digits of, of touching the ball and letting him do something with the ball. I think if they if they if we concentrate on that, we got to be creative with it too. That means put him in the backfield. Let him come out of the backfield. Let him run it right out of the backfield. Let him get into. Maybe get into you know to a uh, uh, a uh, shotgun situation where he's there and he's doing that. That's what we need to do. We need to be creative and getting Stanley the ball. All right. Well, game number two at home is coming up on Saturday. It'll be the Wildcats and Northern Arizona and Glenn. Hopefully, all the kinks will be ironed out for Saturday night because it's well, there's only one way to go and that's up. Yeah, yeah, it is absolutely. And NAU, we, I, you know, I'm expecting us to really crush them. We should crush them, and uh, we should be able to enforce our our will on them. I think that's what I'm expecting, and uh, and I hope we do that. All right, Northern Arizona, Arizona. We'll be back to preview that game for you on Saturday.